previous video, we have seen on how to declare and define various methods directly inside a JavaScript object. Not only that, we have also seen on how to define methods inside a constructor function, create instance out of it, and then accessing the same methods using the newly ins created instances. In this video, we are going to look a bit more about methods. So first of all, methods, which are very similar to functions, those particular methods can always accept parameters and at the same time they can return values. So those are the quite so common things what we generally do with respect to functions. So all those particular function features, whatever we do, are also available for methods. Methods can have objects as parameters. That is important. So till now we have seen like the functions accepting the primitive types like strings or integers or whatever. But methods can also have objects to be sent as parameters. So now you can see wo here is just a parameter. However, you can see I'm trying to access members from the same object wo and then assign to the members of the current object. So indirectly what I'm doing here is I'm sending an object and at the same time, I would like to have all those members to be accessible and fetch the values from those members and at the same time assign those values to the current object, whatever I created out of this one. So this is a constructor function anyway. And not only that, we can also have methods which can return objects. So if you can see, this is a particular function or a method which is internally building up its own object and finally returning an object. So this function currently doesn't accept any parameters. However, it is doing its own creation or it is creating a new object and then returning it. So it doesn't necessarily be the same object as of this particular constructor function, but it could be any object or any anonymous object on the fly and the same object can be returned back. And to make it quite so simple, instead of creating a variable and then returning it, you can directly use this syntax, so which means I'm actually creating an object on the fly in the form of an anonymous object and then have all the members defined and then return it directly. So all I'm doing is I'm just eliminating the object O, so variable, just the variable, but still the definition of that particular object is still available here. So this is another shortcut way of directly returning an object versus storing an object in a variable and then returning the same variable back. So let us see a couple of examples on this one. So let me create a new HTML file and I'm going to call this one as 06. And let me start with script here. And now I would like to start with the constructor function so as part of this particular function, I would like to have a couple of members, like first of all, I would like to have employee name to be defined, and then I would like to have salary to be made available. And of course, those are the default values I'm providing. And now I'm going to have a new method called set employee to be developed in such a way that it is going to be an anonymous function as of now. And on top of that, I'm actually having a particular object to be sent as a parameter and I can directly access the current object related members and assign the values fetched from other objects. So in this case, I can just say like all those particular members, these a name and sal are these two. So which means I am trying to fetch the values available inside these objects. So, which is nothing but that particular object wo. So all the members are available inside the object wo for which I'm going to pass that whenever I'm going to execute set employee. So while calling set employee, I'm going to send an object and I'm expecting that that particular object is going to have two members. And I'm fetching each of those particular values 
directly from the respective members of the same object whatever has been sent and assign those values to the current properties of the current object. Similarly, on top of it, I can still have something like get annual salary to be written. And this is going to just return the multiplied value of the current salary by 12. So this is just another method which I would like to use it for testing whether this particular function is working correctly or not. So after that, now I can just create an object out of it by just saying OEMP is nothing but a new instance of the constructor function EMP. And now I can access each of those members by writing directly in this fashion. EMP.salary equal to 5400. Okay, so that is the usual way I am going to write. However, I can also create another object, something like variable, or say a variable object EMP2. And now I am saying this is also new EMP. You can see this is a particular object. Currently, do not have any kind of values inside the members of the object OEMP2. So OEMP2 is currently a new object with having all of these members. However, there are no values assigned. But for the previous object, I already assigned those two values. In this case, I am going to call OEMP2 dot set employee and then I am going to send OEMP. So if you can see, I am calling this method on OEMP2. So which means I am calling this particular method set employee based on the context of OEMP2. So right now at the very beginning, even before calling set employee, all of the members are already available. However, the properties of these two, I mean the values of these two properties are currently just the default values. But however, once I call set employee, what it does is that this is the method which accepts another object as parameter and this will be automatically gone into object O, just a variable. So this variable will have all the members along with their values, everything will be copied or say referred by this particular variable O. Now whenever I say o.ename, you are indirectly accessing oemp.ename, which is nothing but JAG. Similarly, if you are accessing o.salary, you are actually accessing oemp.salary, which is nothing but 5400. While accessing those two values, you are assigning the same values to the respective properties of the current object. So what is the current object's context? It is OEMP2. So essentially you are copying all the values from OEMP into the OEMP2. So after this, whenever I say alert, and now I can say annual salary, and okay, now let me get even the name as well. So I can say OEMP2 dot employee name concatenated with earns earns OEMP2 dot get annual salary per annum. So I got a typo here. Let me remove that. So OEMP2 so I'm accessing ename in OEMP2. I'm accessing get annual salary directly from OEMP2, which is nothing but this guy. And all of those together with concatenations and just let us check if this is going to work. And now you can see it is working exactly the way it is supposed to do. Okay, so now that we understood on how we can actually send objects as parameters. The other thing is that we need to also learn the way on how a particular method can return the objects. So let me create another HTML file for that one and I'm going to call that one as 07. 
So in this case, I would like to have something like script again. So again, I am going to start with the constructor function, very similar to what I had earlier, but in this case, I would like to send some parameters directly during the instantiation. So once I have that, I can just say this dot ename equal to v name. So I'm just initializing the members with the parameters. So I can say salary, and now I can say get details with annual salary. So you can just put whatever the name you want it, but in this case, I am thinking that it is more readable. So I have a method which is going to return. So let me first create an object out of it. So I'm going to create an anonymous object right then and there itself, and I'm going to say there exists a property name for this object O. So object O is an anonymous object. I am creating the structure along with the values right here. So at the same time I can say this dot e name. So I have the first property and the second property I would like to have something like this. Salary this dot cell. And now I can say annual salary equal to this dot cell start 12. So in that way, I can have an object to be created and finally return the same object. So I created an object with these three members and returning the same object. So now, let me create an instance of this particular constructor function. So I'm going to declare an object called OEMP and that is going to be nothing but an instance of constructor function EMP which is going to have two values to be sent as parameters for which I sent two values like JAG and the salary and those two will be made available as part of OEMP. So once we have that, now I would like to have all of those members to be accessible. So I just wanted to take whatever I did earlier so that I can minimize my typing work. So I would like to have OEMP to be used. And in this case, I can still work with what I, uh, what I say, ename and salary. So earns salary for now. So I'm not calling the method yet. So it, this is not per annum. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just accessing these two properties. So you can see I'm just accessing those two properties. However, now I would like to have another variable called something like this, OEMP2 equal to, I can say OEMP dot and execute this particular method. So as I mentioned, this is the method which returns an object. So which means all of these is automatically stored inside OEMP2. So OEMP2 is a new object which will have three properties called name, salary and annual salary with those respective values. So let me do the same here. But care should be taken in a different way right here. First of all OEMP2 is an object of this type. So which contains this object. This object essentially has name but not a name. So it has a property name called e name, just name. So you need to provide the same name right here. Similarly, OEMP2, which is again nothing but the same object, is not having sal, it is indeed having salary. So I need to get that one here. And on top of that, I can also say annual salary as OEMP2 dot annual salary. So I'm just using the same property I have, whatever I have in there right here. So the first one is just our traditional employee name and salary which is JAG and 5400. Even the second one we are going to get the same values however using different property names. JAG earns salary 5400 and another annual salary which will be roughly about 60,000 plus. So let us see. So the first one 
which is just an ordinary one and now you have the annual salary also to be displayed so this is one way of doing so let me accomplish the same in another way so instead of actually having a variable which contains the reference of the object whatever it is returning I can also do the same thing by just writing something like this I can say annual salary directly so just if I'm interested only in annual salary I can just say of course I need to have OEMP already created first so I can just say OEMP dot get annual salary so get details so which means currently I'm getting this entire object but I'm interested in only this property so I can just say dot annual salary so in this way you can actually get rid of this particular variable however you are not going to access anything more than this particular variable so just ensure that if you are just accessing only one property this is good enough but if you would like to access more than one property this is the way to go so let us see if this is working fine and now you can see I still got the annual salary in such a way.